Hello. In this video, we're going to look at the different icons you might see in the binder. The binder, of course, is a list of documents on the left of the main interface in Scrivener. This can be shown or hidden using the binder toolbar item. First, let's look at some of the obvious ones. We have the draft folder, research folder, and trash folder. If there is something in the trash, see how the trash can icon changes to show that it is full. Media files are straightforward too. Here I'm going to drag in some files from the finder. As you can see from the finder window, I have a PDF file, a movie file, a sound file, and an image file. Let's drag those into the binder. Whilst I'm at it, I'll also import a web page. If we zoom into the imported files in the binder, you can see that they all have icons that give you a clue about their content. All familiar from Safari, QuickTime and Preview. One thing to note is that any file can become a container. If I grab one of these files and drop it onto one of the others, Note how it becomes a sub-document. Also note how the icon for the container document has changed slightly. It now looks like a stack. Any icon that looks as though it is in a stack indicates that the document has sub-documents. Of course, you can always see this from the triangle next to it in the binder anyway, but the stack icon can help identify that a document has sub-documents when looking at it from another view, such as in the editor header view or corkboard view. So, that's media files. Now let's take a look at text files. Let's create a text file. I'll just select a document in the binder and hit return to create a new document beneath it. Note how the icon is blank. A blank text icon indicates that the document has no text and no synopsis associated with it. Now let's open the inspector and type some text into the synopsis. See how the icon of the document now changes to an index card. This indicates that the document has a synopsis associated with it, but not text as yet. If we type some text into the main text area, the icon changes again, this time to a text file with text in it. This indicates that the text file has text associated with it. Now let's take a snapshot of the document. See the video tutorial on snapshots for more information about this useful feature. See how the icon now has a curled corner. A curled corner indicates that this text document has one or more snapshots associated with it. Text documents can be containers too. Let's drag and drop a document onto this text document. See how the icon becomes a stack, just as it did with media files. Here we have a text file that only has a synopsis associated with it, as we can see by the index card icon. Again, if we drag a document onto it, the index card becomes a stack of cards. This tells us that the document has a synopsis associated with it, but no text, and that it has sub-documents. Finally, let's look at folders. As folders are intended for holding other documents, their icons don't change to indicate that they have sub-documents. See how I have an empty folder here, but dragging items into it doesn't change the icon. Remember that folders are really a special type of file though, so their icons may change to indicate content in the same way. Let's add a synopsis to this folder. Note how an index card appears in the corner of the icon for this folder. This indicates that this folder has a synopsis associated with it, but no text. Now let's deselect the corkboard to see the text of the folder. See the flexibility of folders in Scrivener video for more about how folders can be used like this. If I type some text, you will see that the index card in the corner of the folder icon has been replaced by a text icon. This indicates that the folder contains some text. 
Note that this has nothing to do with whether it has sub-documents or not. And, just as with text files, I can take a snapshot of the text inside a folder. If I do so, you will see that the text icon in the corner of the folder icon curls, just as a regular text icon does, to indicate that this folder has text that has had one or more snapshots taken of it. Incidentally, I can get binder icons to take on the colour of their label by going to View, Tint Icons with Label Colour. This is easily undone by going through the same process again. OK, that concludes our tutorial video on binder icons. Goodbye for now.